Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. So a little bit earlier, I actually finished recording another video where I played Guess the Price. And in the meantime, you can guess how that turned out. <laughs> so lame. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's move on. I'm not sure how to set this one up exactly, but I just found this absolutely gorgeous house on Dwell that I just need to tell you guys about. Uh, so this one, the headline of it is a designer couple treat their Eichler to a refresh with a funky vintage style. So guys, if you don't know, the Eichler house is named after a real estate developer. And this kind of house, I believe, was being built in the very early 1950s to kind of the middle 1970s. So Greg Ledesma and Paula Ayula display their passion for all things mid-century with their online shop and through their restored Southern California home. So guys, I think some of you have caught on to my love of mid-century modern things, especially where I normally shoot in my uh, studio, and that is uh, heavily influenced in those videos by the mid-century modern design. So this is Paula talking. She said, it was the most beautiful house I've ever seen, said Paula, a photographer, film editor, and mid-century design fanatic, this guy as well, of the first time she walked through the front door of the Greg Ledesma half-renovated Eichler in 2018. So Greg, an interior designer with more than two decades of experience, felt the same way. He spent years ogling the mid-century homes in the Fair Hills neighborhood of Orange, California, before a model by renowned architects and Eichler designers A. Quincy Jones and Frederick Emmons dropped into his price range in 2012. I am so envious of this guy right now, uh, but guys, I'm also recording this on my phone, so I will uh, drop some pictures as well as some of the text of the article as we go. Um, he pounced his design antenna on high alert with a plan to modernize, knock down walls, and liberally apply his own perspective. Awesome. You know, there are like a lot of extra walls in kind of that, um, you know, 40s to the 70s uh, style houses, and you can really uh, work with them a lot. And I'm excited to show you guys what Greg has done with this. The photo that I'm looking at now, I'll put it up big on the screen because it is absolutely beautiful. But this one was built in 1964, and it's one of the 80 developed by Eichler and designed by Jones and Edmonds. So um, like most Eichlers, it features a fairly closed facade with windows that are either clerestory or clouded glass. Um, so guys, Clara story just means like they're um, up, up high, basically. Clara story windows is a very common feature on, um, you know, kind of churches and, and that style of architecture. Just anything up high. It's a fancy word. <laughs> uh, they could have just said high windows. Uh, with four bedrooms and two baths, the Eichler plan, uh, I guess they're standardized. This is 1605, boasts a striking double gable roof. I love double gable roofs and a central atrium. The central atrium needs to make a comeback. And uh, maybe I'm spoiling it a little bit, but I think, um, oh yes, yes. This one has outdoor space just in the center of the house, which is awesome. Uh, so guys, it's kind of a, a courtyard setup. So basically picture a rectangle and then you're removing a chunk from the center. So it's surrounded by all four walls of your house. It's just that you have outdoor space like um, in the middle of the house, which is absolutely awesome. I would love a house like that someday. This is just like one of my favorite styles. I'm such like, <laughs> such like a freak from mid-century modern. Oh, I can't stand it. I am getting like a physical reaction to just how much Greg absolutely crushed this design. Whereas the facade is closed to the street, the interior opens up to a central atrium. I should have mentioned that. Um, a lot of reasons that um, this kind of style developed was, you know, the houses were um, pretty close together, so it gave you like a private outdoor space. 
and it was just um, nice and closed off, and it had very free and flowing design. Uh, so the central atrium is one of Paula and Greg's favorite places in the home. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. I can totally imagine why. All the glass makes the design feel larger than it's... Oh, wow. It's under it's under 2,000 square feet. I was looking at the plan, and it just... I don't know. It feels bigger than that. Uh, so it's 1,986 if you want to be specific. And uh, now that I'm looking at the photos... So Greg did the interior design. Um, all the photos are by Paula, and she's just like... This is just like out of the park just a home run greg crushed the design paulo killed the photos and it's all coming together i like oh my god i want this house so badly but i can't afford it uh with a limited budget greg's renovations plan stalled that's that's fair especially kind of i'd imagine he was doing it uh pretty close to 2022 and the prices of everything uh, went up quite substantially. Uh, it was lucky, he says, explaining that after living with the home's original layout, he came to appreciate the original version and the harmony of the spaces. That, that's interesting. So um, he took time to take it all in and then uh, executed it in a way that was uh, sensitive to the original design, which is cool. So a little bit of, um, you know, his vision mixed along with the original architects. That vision to package high-end architecture and indoor-outdoor living for the middle-class consumption met the home's distinctive dual gable roof and central atrium were perfectly balanced with modestly proportioned bedrooms, a kitchen, and a bath. Guys, um, I'll put up uh, the plan, and it has a front elevation as well. And just something about the forms of the house and the way that the plan is laid out just gives me like, oh, like oh, I want it so badly. Um, one of those. <laughs> oh my goodness, calm down, calm down. Whew. All right, we'll we'll bring it uh, we'll bring it back. We'll get it in check. Uh, so Greg's neighbors, many of whom were original owners, invited him into their unaltered Eichlers. Interesting. That is um, kind of unique, actually. I didn't realize a lot of um, houses like that, just due to um, times and the ways that the style changes, a lot of people modify um, mid-century stuff. Although if you have people who really appreciated the original style to begin with, I guess it makes sense that they would preserve it. Uh, you could see the deep green of the mature gardens from every room, and the mahogany walls just shone with richness, so warm and inviting. From that point, he was committed to restoring the home to its original glory. And guys, like, the color palette of this is just, like, so warm and natural, and it just feels right. That's how you know it's good design, when you just can't really get to the heart of why it all works. You kind of just like look at it and you say like from the walls to the floor to like the forms of everything it just goes together like it was meant to and that is like the highest compliment for design so wow six years into renovating greg good for you dude like staying committed to the project i love that uh, Greg had completed structural fixes and repaired the leaky roof and the defunct air conditioner. Yeah, a lot of those appliances are just, like, done, like, completely done. And we've made, like, so many improvements to everything, like, you might as well just replace it. He was in the process of stripping away the white paint from the walls and ceiling when he and Paula met at the Long Beach Antique Market. Oh my goodness, this house is just, like getting uh, like their own story greg killing it my dude and uh you can see here a picture of greg and paula together and this photo i know it's not of the house but it's what caught my eye originally because i was just like that's a really cool landscape photo like you have this old uh i should say vintage car in the background i was just like i am loving everything i'm i'm so about it i was just like i gotta click on that and see what's going on 
When the couple started dating, Greg and Paula would take his classic Buick for rides through nearby Santiago Canyon. For us, there's just something about being in that car. Nothing replicates it, said Greg. That is a pretty sick car. <laughs> Greg, do you like, uh, maybe you see this? If you want to change places, let me know. Hit me up. Uh, or just like, if you want to like, give me your house. You know what? I'll take the car too. I can't be picky. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hopefully that, uh, hopefully you guys know I'm joking around. Uh, the interior is cherry red and platinum. Totally exquisite, said Paula. I mean, it looks beautiful from the outside. And, uh, she also said it feels like a spaceship. Pretty cool stuff. So the next portion of this article gets into an interview between Dwell and Greg, it looks like. As creatives, can you talk a little bit about your shared style sensibility? Oh, good question. I was wondering about that as well. So this is Greg talking. We met at the Long Beach Antique Market, which sounds awesome, by the way. I gotta check that out. Oh, I gotta get to California. I love California. Just like, the weather is so good. I mean, LA has the traffic, though. That is just like absolutely awful. Um, so side tangent, we'll bring up a sidebar for a minute, but the first time that I went to LA, you know, you hear things about the traffic and you go, eh, is it really as bad as people say? Like, uh, I was taking a car from the airport and it's just like, you get right onto the highway and you just stopped immediately and backed up in traffic. I was like, oh, I think that's confirmed. Uh, so let's see. So they met at the Long Beach Antique Market and started talking and haven't stopped since. That's awesome, guys. Uh, we are both mid-century design nerds. This guy, I'm gonna lump myself in, me too. And we really live that lifestyle. I can like, I can see it. Oh, I like, I love everything that they're about. Our talents complement each other really well. Yes, I can see that. And we enjoy bouncing house ideas off each other. Oh, guys, that's so awesome when you like, meet some people like that that are on the same wavelength. Paula is great about knowing when there's too much and it's time to pare something down. And uh, Paula says, we love collaborating. Within two months of meeting, he suggested we start our shop. Wow, getting into business right away. Guys, these are the stories that I love to hear, like where it's not just about the house. I especially love hearing like couple stories like this. It just, <laughs> I don't know, in a weird way, I think it kind of gives me hope. Uh, Paula E. Gregoria was the name of their shop, or is the name, I should say, and she said yes immediately, so Paula was feeling that energy right away. Uh, so tell us about your online vintage shop, Paula E. Gregorio. Greg, we have been collecting since the early 2000s. I have a vintage shop in Palm Springs. I gotta look that up. Just before the real estate market skyrocketed there. Unsurprisingly, it was an incredible place to collect mid-century items. Yeah, guys, um, that is like right in the heart of mid-century uh, modern, <laughs> like uh, the capital of the world, I guess. Uh, California, right in that area, just right in the center. So this is Paul again. We really got the shop going during the pandemic when I started photographing the pieces in our home. Oh my God, I can totally see that. Like, there is something about when you're looking online and you see a product in an environment, it really lets you sort of picture, uh, you say, okay, you know what? That gives me an idea. Here's what I can do. And then uh, you buy that piece and you make it your own. Um, so let's see, Greg uh, is talking about collecting pieces. It says, it makes so much sense to use our house as a showroom, agreed. It's invaluable to display a mid-century modern piece in a mid-century modern home. Yes, it is. It is its natural environment. It really captures the strength of the style and shows scale. Yeah, Greg, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Uh, so this is a question to Paula. How does your photography reflect the Eichler style? I am very curious about that. So Paula actually answers this with a question I was wondering as well. 
So she says, I work with a 35 millimeter camera, so I was wondering if it was on film because it had that very um, film feeling to it. So she said she works on film and she loves it. It's very, very special to me, me too, and I know when to use it and what works. Yeah, she, uh, <laughs> she nailed it, just no notes. The house has so much beautiful life and warmth. Oh my god, yes. And the light it gives us is just amazing. Yes. Um, a lot of people use those clerestory windows because it kind of brings the light in from the top and just sort of um, filters it down diagonally across the walls in just this beautiful way. Um, it tells me when to take photographs at the warmest moments which make you truly feel something. I am feeling feelings right now. Often it's in the evening at golden hour. Yeah, that's when the light really sort of diffuses and spreads across all of your surfaces equally. I like to keep things very natural. Yes, and when you have natural light in abundance, it is a lot easier to do so. And even if the lighting isn't perfect or the shots come out a little dark, I feel like it's the best way to capture the moment. Yeah. It has um, that very natural look, and it's just right. Every Guys, I am telling you, just everything about this is working. Uh, so this is Greg uh, talking about Paula's photography. Uh, Paula's ability to capture the house on film really blew my mind. Mine too. It's just the right fit for the era and the perfect expression of my original vision. The warmth she captures is different than digital. Yes, it is. It feels more real, not as photoshopped and ultra clear. There is something that, um, I don't know, sometimes I find there's an inherent sort of unnatural sharpness with digital, and I have to make um, my photos a little bit um, less harsh. Like, make them, this is sounding weird, but make them like a little bit blurrier. And if you work, the colors in Photoshop and whatnot, you can arrive at something that looks like film, like uh, maybe 95%. You can get pretty close. Um, it feels more real, not as Photoshopped and ultra clear. With an iPhone, you can take like a trillion photos, but she is mindful and considerate with every shot and never takes more than one or two. Yeah, I mean, that is uh, sort of the mindset you get into with um, film. It's just like it feels like a lot more expensive. Although, to be fair, there are like film cameras that can shoot like 10 frames per second. So it's really a mindset whether you bring it to um, film or digital to be intentional. At least that's my opinion. So what are some key elements of your renovation? So Greg says the mahogany walls and redwood ceilings really help to anchor the living spaces. And it's true with so many Eichlers, ours has been painting over during the 70s or 80s, not great eras architecturally. Um, I have been removing each entire wood panel one by one and bringing them outside and then using a chemical paint stripper before standing them. That is dedication, and Greg is just doing it right. Like, I can't really explain this, but like, as we get further and further into this article, my heart is just like full that like, one, Greg has this house, like he's renovating it in just like the right way. He's doing like such a beautiful job. Like this couple have met and like now live together in this house. It's just like, Everything, I am like, I don't, I can't even explain it. I am so happy for them. Uh, so Paula says the atrium at the core of our home and its maturing plants really balance out the colors of our interior design. Yeah, it is um, sort of balancing out that earthy, um, I, I guess you could call it kind of that brown and red color with um, the greenery of plantings. Uh, every day we appreciate the planting we did early on. The essence of the Eichler is indoor-outdoor balance, and without that greenery, it would feel hollow. Absolutely. And um, I'll put up some photos now on the screen of the greenery that she's talking about. I imagine I'll be putting up uh, some other photos as well, but I just like, once it starts with 
the mid-century modern stuff especially executed in such like an ideal way i just i all bets are off and i just can't help myself but continue to sort of like be blabbering on um so we're scrolling through a couple more sort of detail photos so guys i think we are going to end this video on this last question because it's something that uh, i was also curious about but the question is what's the hardest part about restoring an eichler uh greg who says access to materials many of the original components of eichler construction are no longer available yes and the way that houses are built nowadays this makes it um, very, very uncommon to find the original materials that would have constructed these houses. And it really is something that you have to go to a specialty place for. So be prepared to spend that money. Um, let's see. Some glass elements, such as the frosted glass by the front door, just aren't made anymore. We found comparable equivalents, yes. Like, nothing in the photos or in the house looks out of place, so they did a great job with that. Some of us Eichler nerds patrol the neighborhood, watching out for new owners renovating original homes. Then we either ask kindly to salvage pieces or just dumpster dive. <laughs> that is dedication. So guys, I think we're going to end it there because I will not stop. Otherwise, I just can't. I, I gotta put a pin in it. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep going and uh, we'll be here all day. Uh, so, guys, I hope that you enjoyed. And uh, as always, I will talk to you again very soon.